Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Big Cat and today we got the Scarlet and Violet official second trailer. I've already seen this, I've watched it plenty of times trying to re-record this and what I think is going to happen with this game is that we're playing in two separate universes slash timelines depending on what game we play. Now obviously the logos are kind of a, a giveaway at that because they're very different texts like this is more traditional this is more modern with slash futuristic it is kind of hinting toward that it also hints toward the legendaries which is really cool let me just go to this obviously as you know we have two separate professors depending on what version we're playing which i think is also another hint at that and I, I think the outlier between the both games and how the games interconnect with each other, because obviously you're, if you're playing in your own universe, which this is a, a theory that MatPat had talked about, where every Pokemon character is, it, is its own separate universe, that's a, uh, a, a, a different story for another day. Anyway, I think the way that they all interconnect happens to do with your rival slash friend. And then, of course, as people have pointed out as well on Twitter, uh, Sada and Toro. I am going to pronounce that so wrong. Uh, it, it is... God, I've been up since 6 a.m. and I already cannot pronounce names very, very well to begin with. However, as people have pointed out on Twitter, their names represent past and future. I don't know if that would really be like a reference to anything, but the thing that I've been going with is that it's our friend slash rival that connects the two universes here. Or like the couple of timelines. Using this device on her arm. Because there's no other tra trainer in this entire trailer that uses it except for her. And there's no mention of it on the website either. So it's either... A device that assists her for catching Pokemon, like she used from the past and she can't really catch Pokemon all that well, or it lets her hop between the two main universes or like the multiverse, I guess. We'll just call it that from this point forward, because every fucking property on the planet has a multiverse of their own. So I wouldn't be surprised if Pokemon starts to dabble into it. Now, let me just a bit forward here. Oh, here we go. See? No obvious device on on our main trainer. And I think this shot in particular is supposed to be focusing on, like, obviously, like, like this is the introduction shot of her, but it's supposed to put a lot of focus on her arm and this device on her arm. And I think it has a lot to do with how she travels between the multiverse. And unfortunately, I cannot pronounce her name for the life of me either. I think her name's uh, Namana. I'm just gonna call her that, Namana. <laughs> it's probably not her name. However, like I said, I cannot pronounce names for the life of me. Just skip forward a bit. So that's the part where they talk about uh, the, the co-op function, which I want to talk about a little bit later on. However, what I want to mention here is no other trainer has anything similar to that device on their arms and she's the only one with it and they put a lot of focus in it on that particular shot of her introduction and I think that's what will allow us to connect to the other games at this uh, kiosk here which is like the Pokemon Center slash Pokemon slash something else let me go over here where you can actually get a better shot of it now, here we go. Whatever this third one is, I'm sure it has something to do with that device. And there's probably something in the story that allows us to connect to the other games. And there's probably multi-dimensional research in this game as well. But they're no stranger to that. They've done this in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. So they're probably going to expand upon it and use that as a reason to justify why there's two separate versions now after going from Legends of Arceus where you, you don't need the separate versions where we have this now 
Of course, the real reason is because they want money, but, you know, from a story standpoint, this would make sense. At least to me. It'd be, like, the, the least confusing thing to do. It's hard to explain because I've been up since 6 in the morning and I don't really have a script for this video. However, a future video is going to have a script. And the next thing I want to point out is this specific island where we see the legendaries. So, obviously, this is in the middle of the ocean with some random rock formation. And this is all we see. So there's that one structure here, goes up, and it shows off the legendary for Scarlet and the legendary for Violet. It's the same location? So both Pokemon are in the same spot. However, it splits down the middle, and I think this is a telltale sign that it, this is two separate universes. And that is dependent on the fact whether or not you buy Scarlet or if you buy Violet. And then there's also speculation about them being motorcycles, and they're kind of based around them. Which, like, there's very clear influence that this is a more traditional bike, while this is more of the futuristic bikes. Being like a, a hover bike and stuff that you would see in the, in the like, the distant future stuff that people wouldn't expect for another couple hundred years where technology is far more advanced and i think there's some story elements that play into it that affect this region and cause it to have like a split timeline or for it to go off into a multiverse wide panic i suppose something akin to what loki had caused in the mcu which I, I don't really want Pokemon to copy, but I think that would be like a really cool idea and a really good way for them to justify splitting up the games again. Which could then also go into other gameplay elements and stuff that I want to talk about later on, because this also has to do with Eevee and, and some other things. But yeah, just, just for this video, I wanted to point out some of these things and speculate, saying like, we're possibly going to be playing in two separate universes, depending on what game you play. And to go back to Eevee... I think we're going to get an Eeveelution, but not just one of them, I think we're going to get two of them. And they're going to make them version exclusive. And I'll just leave that as like a, a hint toward the next video. I'll go into more detail, because I, I want to write out a script for that one, or more of like bullet points to talk about, because this is just a video where I rambled on about random shit and speculated on what the quote-unquote story might be for Scarlet and Violet, but obviously we won't know until the day it comes out, which just so happens to be, was it November 18th? Yeah, so on the 18th is when we find out whether or not this is all right or if this is just completely wrong. Which, I mean, probably is, because I don't think Pokemon's going to go that hard and and make a story to justify why there's two separate game versions again. However, that's the fun of this. You know, we're just going to speculate, we're going to take what little information we have and run with it and see what could possibly happen, or, or, or see if we we're just completely far off. That's the whole, uh, the whole point of making these videos. And th this video will either age really well or really poorly. Let me do a proper outro. This has been your host, Big Cat, streaming daily over on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the official Big Cat, link in the description, as well as posting more videos similar to this one. I'm going to be trying to make this a regular thing until Scarlet and Violet release. If you guys like this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and even subscribe, because I'm going to try to make this a more consistent thing. In any case, I've been your host. That name, once again, is Big Cat, and I am shining out. You guys take it easy, and I'll see you all next time.